Thanks. Yeah, so I'll uh, present a few packages that we are developing in uh, our group at uh, Sustainable Energy Technology at Sintef. Um, and in our group, we are doing mostly uh, modeling of uh, optimization problems. Uh, and there is sort of two different layers. You have a modeling layer where you set up all, all the equations and inequalities and the objectives and so on. And then there is a separate uh, numerical solver and especially for the mixed integer linear programming uh, problems the commercial solvers are incred incredibly hard to beat uh, for so we usually we don't uh, develop our own solution methods but we do a lot of modeling so uh, in julia there is um, a modeling framework called jump julia math programming and uh, we have started using that more and more in our group, especially as we are doing more stuff that we want to share with the world, make it open source available and so on. Uh, while previously we did more uh, work with uh, commercial software like uh, YAMS and uh, MoSell, which is the modeling language for uh, FICO Express. Um, and we see that uh, Jump is jump and Julia in general is very nice for us because we can do uh, lots of things that are hard in these commercial systems. Uh, we can do more like proper software engineering, make modular code, uh, share it, have uh, testing and all of these nice uh, things uh, that tend to be quite hard in, in these uh, sometimes quite old uh, modeling systems. So we find that uh, jump is, uh, is really nice for our purposes, uh, but uh, we have also run into uh, some issues with the jump. So, so uh, the first package that I will present is called sparse variables. So mostly we uh, can do everything we want in, uh, in jump, um, but we think that perhaps uh, some of the things we do are not the same priority as the developers uh, of Jump. So especially when when you have uh, problems with uh, lots of sparsity in the variables, and I will show an example uh, soon. Uh, there are both some uh, performance issues with Jump in just in constructing the problem, and also some usability uh, issues. And and you'll see some uh, some. Uh, examples of that uh, later. So you can usually work around those issues uh, in terms of performance, but then the code is more verbose and it's difficult to read and work with. But fortunately, it's also designed in such a way that we can uh, add functionality. Um, and, uh, and what I will show is a new specialized container type for Sparse variables or, or problems with uh, with those uh, structures. So, as a motivation, uh, we have a, like a very simple uh, supply chain problem. So, uh, the axes here, these are the decision variables. So you have and you have sets. You have uh, different factories and you have different products P, and then you have different customers and different time periods. And you want to decide which products to serve to which customers from what factory uh, to uh, what, at what time. And then you have uh, the sources of the sparsity here is that, uh, for example, not all customers have demand for all the products, but you need to make sure that in total that you can supply uh, enough to meet the demand. And then there are some limits on how much you can produce for each from each factory and how much you can you know, uh, transport between the factory and customers and so on. Uh, but this, all of this is just to set up sort of a realistic test case uh, which has this uh, sparse structure. So in addition, there is also a limitation here on, on which factories can produce a specific product. So while you have lots of possible theoretical combinations. In practice, very few of these are uh, you actually need to use as a decision variable in your problem. And um, one common way, which we call uh, the standard way, that's the, the function on the left, 
One way to model this is to just say, well, we don't care about the sparsity. We just, you know, add all the variables, uh, which should do um, up here. And then you just say that if it's uh, down here, you just say that if, if it's not compatible, uh, so if you actually don't need this variable, you just say, well, it has to be zero. Uh, and this works. And if it's a small problem, uh, it's not a problem. But as you scale this problem up, as we will see uh, soon, uh, just creating the problem starts taking quite a while. And uh, we also had this uh, Julacon video uh, on this. So if you want to look at all the different sort of approaches that we tried to, to uh, work around this problem, you can go there. But in the middle is the, um, the fastest way that we uh, the fastest workaround that uh, we have for this uh, this um, this problem, and it's sort of around uh, twice as much code, and uh, uh, you don't have the same correspondence between the uh, mathematical formulation and your code that you have in the example uh, on the left, and you have to sort of manually track uh, different dictionaries and just inserting all the variables that you know that you actually need and then build up the different expressions manually and then you get quite fast uh, performance but it's uh, much harder to read and difficult to work with uh, and on the right you can see uh, our la latest version where we use our own custom uh, container and the difference there is that we just uh, when you create the variable over here, it's just an uh, empty container. And then we just add the variables down here that we know that we actually need. So only those that we actually need are created and inserted into the structure. And then we also have, um, we can uh, do slicing of these variables uh, efficiently. This also turned out to be a performance issue if you want to to try uh, slicing actually for the for sparse axis arrays that come with jump uh, it wasn't even supported to do slicing and uh, they have now added that functionality uh, after after our talk um, but as you can see um, there are some performance issues with that so these are the uh, this is just an example to show how the time spent on constructing the problem increases as you increase the problem size in in just one dimension so this is just adding uh, more customers but we have uh, we had four different indices so you could say that well all of these could in principle be much larger than in our example and then you would have a polynomial uh, increase in in the time spent to just to create the problem and this uh, blue here that is using the the first the approach on the left where you just say that well we create all and just say they have to be zero and then we have some uh, some workarounds using dictionaries down here that work uh, much better and then you have the um this is the one in the middle that was doing everything manually and that's quite nice uh, performance and this is the, the custom type that we showed at the Julicon. and then after after the presentation uh, two things happened one was that they uh, one thing was that they added uh, slicing support for the sparse axis arrays which is the uh, yellow one do you see that for the larger problems, uh, it's not doesn't have so nice performance. And we also added a new optimized version of the same ID that we use for the for the first uh, sparse variable that is almost as fast as doing it manually. Um, and that's just implementing doing things like the typical Julia things like making sure it's type stable and, and things like this. Um, and the basic idea is that we are we are caching these uh, slicing uh, operations, so you don't have to do them, do all the work over and over and over and over. 
uh, and uh, if you have problems with different degrees of sparsity, that's something we wanted to look at. So how, how does it sort of scale or how does it uh, work if you go from a very sparse to a not so sparse? So we have the very sparse um, structure on the left and then not so sparse on this end. And then you see that the, the typical workarounds with using dictionaries, they are pretty good if you have really sparse problems, but at some point it crosses over and then you do so much work uh, just filtering and checking out which are valid, valid and which are not. So, And then you pay a large penalty over here. Uh, the, the blue one is the standard, uh, the setting, setting the extra variables to zero. And uh, you can see here that the yellow one is the verbose, not so nice uh, version. And our first attempt was like uh, around the, the same for the not so sparse problems originally. And then we did the updates. And for the updated versions, we are now basically at the same performance as the, as, as the manual one. And the sparse access array, they really get into trouble if you have the uh, not so sparse. Uh, so if you're using sparse access arrays and your problem isn't really sparse, then you get into trouble with, when you do these slicing operations. And and uh, uh, and this, if you are going to use jump for like industrial large problems, this is actually, we need to go down here or preferably even below here. You have some problems that we spend basically as much time constructing the problem as we spend solving the actual problem. So, so if you have a really hard uh, mixed, mixed integer or nonlinear problem, it will typically be uh, much more time spent solving the problem than constructing it. But if you have a mostly linear uh, problem, it can easily, that, that is large, you can easily spend a lot of time just constructing the problem. Uh, so we think it's very nice that we could sort of work out a solution to this uh, ourselves. Um, and I will just uh, present also briefly a couple of other things we're doing. So uh, and this also goes into the, the it's nice to be able to extend the functionality of uh, of the tools that are already existing. So um, we model lots of uh, problems where we have different units and uh, it can be sort of uh, annoying to go over manually and check that we get all the units right, especially. So so I'll show an example that this is a bit just uh, synthetic just to show you that it's possible, but very often we have uh, used the same models, but we use them at different scales. So maybe you create the model using uh, measuring in uh, megawatts or tons or, or something like this. And then you want to use basically the same model, but you want to do it on a much smaller scale. And then you don't want to, you know, uh, model small batteries in megawatts, for example. And, uh, uh, and just making sure that all the equations match up with that when you change the units uh, can be a hassle and you have to check that you're actually doing it right or so. And while the commercial tools don't offer you typically ways to extend the modeling language that's possible in uh, Jump. So my colleague, uh, Turles Flatbag, he implemented the uh, uh, Jump support, no, <laughs> units, unitful.jl support for Jump. Uh, and you can see an example here on the right where you have some variables where the unit is set in meter per second and then Another variable is set in feet per second, and then you have the maximum speed that is set in kilometers per hour. And then you uh, add the constraints and you solve the problem and then you optimize it. And then you get the result out and you get the variables and the optimal value, and they also have the correct units. So it's under the hood, it's scaling everything correctly uh, to use the same unit. And um, yeah, so you add the the units using so it's extending the the, the 
macro system in uh, jump and provide the unit as an extra argument. And then uh, the constraints are scaled internally to make sure everything is consistent. Um, uh, but this is ongoing work, so it's it's uh, supporting just the linear constraints for now. We'll see um, later. And uh, a more relevant example maybe is when you when you want to model uh, use of a battery and you have uh, you have different time scales. So you have uh, some units here is in minutes, and then you have. Uh, uh, initial state of the batteries, uh, kilowatt uh, hours, uh, and then you have uh, yeah, different loads, and then you can uh, you can specify all the different uh, uh, charge and the discharge and on the state and solve the problem, and then you will get uh, uh, answer in the correct units, even even though you uh, model something in minutes and something in hours. Through this uh, example. And the latest, this is an open PR at the moment, that, but that's bringing together these two so the, the sparse variables will work uh, seamlessly with this uh, uh, unit uh, jump. So, uh, so we are currently working on the first actual models where we're using both of these uh, together, but that will be for a later time, I think. And then finally, um, we tend to it's nice to learn about these detailed models that uh, Olav uh, presented because we tend to represent all of these technical details uh, very much approximated. So uh, as far as possible, we try to keep our models uh, linear or piecewise linear. And um, sometimes, well, very often you can uh, get some pretty good approximations and uh, uh, but but what you typically do is that you do have to do all this manually, so I have to sort of uh, discuss. So how can we uh, uh, discretize this? And you look at the expressions and find, you know, uh, ways to approximate it. But sometimes we do projects with our other groups, and they have perhaps they have a complicated simulation model, and then they, we get sort of a production function out that we don't know <laughs> all the details. And perhaps we don't want to know them because it's too complex to to model it directly in our model. And uh, but the idea here is that you you take these points that you get from the more complex model, and if it's a reasonable assumption that it can be approximated by a convex or a concave function, then you can uh, optimize the of the approximation. So it will select given uh, a number of uh, of uh, lines or planes. The, more, the closest approximation uh, with the, the, where you minimize the error. And then you can use that in uh, in the actual optimization. So, so far we have been using this package. It's This is still under development, so it's uh, private at the moment. And I think we need to make it a bit more robust and um, perhaps work a bit more on the, uh, on the interface, but it's quite possible that we will also open source this package uh, at some point. And we have been using it to, to approximate the energy consumption and the, uh, the heat, uh, extra heat from uh, hydrogen production, for example. And also we have used it for compressor energy consumption too, so we can optimize the, optimize the use of uh, compressors to meet certain uh, natural gas transport. Uh, with the least possible uh, energy consumption. So just to show an example how that would look like, this is just, uh, we have uh, just a simple quadratic function. So we generate some points here and you can see those are the axis on the right. And then you can, uh, you can say how many lines or planes would you like to use for your approximation? And then it will get the, the closest uh, closest approximation and we can also integrate this um, at least uh, and you can uh, sort of add the um, on this line here you can see that you can actually oh, you can actually um, include 
you can make it include the actual uh, formulation in the model, so uh, you don't have to sit down and and set up all the different equations to, to make these approximations. You will just add uh, all of them uh, automatically. And this uh, this figure on the right shows you uh, how the approximation is with different numbers of plates. Yeah, so that's what I had today.